Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This video has been filmed over multiple days. There's gonna be a lot of different things in the background you're gonna notice that have changed or are not the same. Example, the Impreza, just because obviously you can see there's no taillights. You're gonna see this car being parted out and sold away piece by piece. It's sad, I'm not really excited about it, but it is what it is. We gotta move on to bigger and better things. Uh, what I wanna do in this video is explain to you how you can Brembo swap your Legacy GT. This also works for your older WRXs your older foresters but the newer cars you got to do something a little bit different so i'm only going to be really looking at the older generation cars uh, and let me just explain why really quickly so right here i have my brembos that were on the impreza they're no longer on the car these are going to be going on to the legacy gt and you can see i got some newer uh, 17 sti brembos right here those are the rears so if we take a front one i'll compare to the black one in the front now holding them side by side, you can tell for the most part, they are pretty much the same. Um, I'm holding the wrong side because you can tell by the uh, the nipple up top, it's not there, it's on the bottom. So this is actually the passenger side one. Uh, you could tell from the 17 STI Brembos to the gold Brembos, which these were gold, they were powder coated red, they are identical. So basically that means front Brembos, you can pretty well bolt up to pretty well any Subaru, whether it's a BRZ, Impreza, WRX, uh, Forester. From my understanding, the fronts bolt up to pretty well any Subaru, no issues, no problems. You just gotta make sure you get the right rotors to fit it in the brake, in the brake pads. Other than that, it bolts up. The issues happen when you get to the rears. Uh, but let me just put the black and red one side by side. You can tell pretty easily that there's a size difference. The black ones are a little bit bigger and the gold or my red set are a little bit smaller. Now, I don't think it's gonna be a huge performance difference you're gonna notice, but it does cause problems when you're bolting up the rear end. What happens is, is when you bolt them up in the back, the bolt spots are different. So you have to get an adapter plate to make this work. Now, I was hoping you can get an adapter plate to make this work on the Legacy. Um, I don't think there's anything out there. I've seen people shave actual material off of here. I don't really think that's cool. I think you're literally just ruining the integrity of the brake caliper. And to me, it's kind of seems stupid and you're destroying the purpose of even getting them, in my opinion. Um, so for the newer rear brakes, they do not fit the older generation cars. You have to stick with the gold Brembos. There's nothing you can do about it, from my understanding. Now, to make them bolt up, you need these adapter plates. Now, I bought these a while ago, and to be honest, this, all these parts came off of my Impreza, which is right there. So I know this works. Um, you can get these adapter plates. I think Torque Solution makes them. I think I got them from like some rally website a few years back. Um, they're a little, little pricey, but they're not too bad. Uh, they're pretty well, they're pretty much just bolts up to your stock location calipers, and then it makes it so your Brembos can like bolt up to them and it just offsets it the right position. It makes it work. So you have to get these. I'll link them down in the bio. You need these adapters to be able to get your rear calipers to bolt up. Another thing you gotta do is one of two options. You can either do the method I did and as you get oversized rear brake shoes for your e-brake. You can also just use the originals and get rear rotors that are specially made for this application where the diameter around your e-brake is smaller. But what happens is you have to now go with that specific brand and use the exact same brand of rotor every single time you do your brakes. And they're actually heavier in the back. So you have more material you have to move around. So I went with the oversized e-brake shoes. I'll link them down below. Um, they're a little bit of a pain to install, but it works. Now, I am not going to go through and show you exactly what you need to remove everything. If you need to know how to remove your front calipers and stuff, there's tons of videos online. This is just kind of showing you exactly what you need to make this application work. Um, but I mean, it's really not that difficult. If you are planning on doing this modification, you should have a good understanding of how to remove all of this. And also because I already have the front Brembos, my application is a little bit different from yours. But I did take a time lapse of removing these. So I'll go ahead and play for you guys. And then I'll show you how to put the new ones on. Um, before I forget, I forgot to mention it, you are going to need rotors that are from a 2004 STI for the swap of this vehicle and your WRX and your Impreza. And the reason why you need 2004 is because of the bolt pattern. The bolt pattern on these are 5x100 and only came out on a 2004 STI. If you go for 2005, you're going to get the wrong bolt pattern. So you need the front and rear. 
and brake pads, of course. Uh, it has a coating on it, but once you start using it, it does come off. Also, you don't need to upgrade your brake lines. It's just you're in there, so, you know, might as well. Once you have your new rotor on, you have your Brembo caliper secured, bolted in place, your braided brake line ran. You don't need to do this, but it's a nice upgrade if you are in there anyway, since you have to disconnect your brake lines anyways. Nice upgrade. Everything is torqued down. You're good to go. Uh, next is your brake pads. I just got some ceramic brake pads. I don't have anything special. Uh, this is definitely not a track car. This is just, a, to be honest, a winter beater for me uh slash daily i guess because i do plan on keeping this on the road for a while um but it's a nice set of pads i think they'll do fine they also do not come with grease so i have some uh brake lubricant i've used this stuff in the past haven't had an issue and i'm just going to coat the pads slide them in and this side will be done The fronts are definitely the easiest part to do. It just bolts right up, no modifications, everything slides in. The only thing left to do is to bleed the brake on this side, and I'm gonna leave bleeding till the very end so we can do all of it in one shot. To free these up, because these do seize up, especially in Canadian winters, I like to pull off the nipple cap, pull it back a bit, throw some WD-40 in there or PB blaster. So something you could do is you can get a flare nut wrench, and I do have a set of these. You don't wanna just use a normal wrench because it's very easy to to chew up the corners and, and it's toast. But what I really like to do is if they are seized up and have not moved in a long time, I, I like to use a six point uh, socket, slide it over top and then just slowly work out and it comes loose. That's the easiest way I found to break those loose if they are rusted and nine times out of 10, they do not cross thread. I have had them cross thread, but that was the pass and hopefully it doesn't happen again. All right guys, I just finished up the front end cleaned everything up. My fiance was kind enough to clean the BBSs. Thank you, babe. <laughs> One issue I've noticed is where they balance the wheels. It is actually very close to this side of the Brembo and it's going to hit it and destroy the Brembo. So I'm going to take these wheels off, get them rebalanced so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can see these are absolutely clapped out. There's nothing left to these rotors or pads. I'm impressed I was still braking on these. But I'm gonna go ahead, start disassembling everything. I'm not gonna go through the exact procedure of how to remove this. If you are doing the swap, you should know kind of what you're doing. So I'm gonna quickly take these off and we'll start putting on the Brumbos.
right, thankfully, we aren't reusing this because I just had a fight. This bolt and it's almost out. This is what's left of it. <laughs> it was so stuck in there. I don't know why, I just did not want to come out. I had to use one of these uh, bolt extractors. So this did do the trick. But this is garbage now. Those pads are pretty close to non-existent. This rotor is pretty shot. Uh, I threw a couple of the bolts in there to help pull it out. It's just the bolts that bolt on the back of right here on the caliper. So you could use those to help get the rotor off. But I thought that side was bad. Look at this side. Rotor doesn't even exist. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so I basically just beat the living crap out of this thing. As you could tell, Canadian winters have been very friendly to these rotors back here. But, yeah, that's how hard I've been hitting it. This thing did not want to budge. The amount of rust on this thing, these e-brakes did not want to break free. But, now there's two things we gotta do. We gotta remove these e-brakes. Uh, that's because we're putting the oversized ones. And also this heat shield or dust shield that people call it, uh, has to come off. And luckily, uh, Canadian winters have been doing us our job. So, should be pretty easy for us. You can go ahead and drill out these spot welds. Um, you can kind of see them. Um, I'm probably gonna take the easy way and just do this and just break it all off because already I'm almost done. Uh, if there is any little bit sticking up, I'll just hammer it down, flatten it out. But yeah, you can see she's already pretty rusted. So let me get this done, remove the e-brake shoes, and then we can go ahead and install our new e-brake shoes and our new rotors. All right guys, with everything now off, uh, this is probably the most difficult part to get off. There's like a little clip, uh, it looks like this, and you have, to, you have to fight it off. Yeah, if you don't know how to do the e-brake part, I would recommend watching a different video specific for the e-brakes, just because it is a pretty complicated area part of the braking system, and I feel like it's easy to mess up and forget. Just remember, if you're doing this, take a ton of photos. You could use hand tools to do this, it's just, really frustrating to get it done but over here i have the two side by side clearly this is our old rotor and this is our new ones that are for the brembos um, again these are both five by 100 it's just these are, came on the 2004 sti so we get that larger rotor with the five by 100 bolt pattern uh, and then now you can see our e-brakes and it is pretty clear that the original ones are not gonna work for us uh, like obviously inside of here it works fine but once we go to the Brembo one, you could see there's a lot of missing area around it and it moves a lot. So if we take the oversized e-brake shoe, nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead, throw these in. I recommend you guys watching a separate video of someone else that shows how to install these. Uh, they are pretty complicated in my opinion, uh, but it is doable. And even though these are oversized, the only difference is really the extra padding. Well, if you were to even do this with normal e-brake shoes, it's the same exact process. It's just the padding right there is a lot thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead, throw these in, and we can get on to the fun part. Well, I just ran into two issues with the e-brake shoes. So the one above, that's the Legacy one. I just wanna point out, this is probably only gonna be a problem for Legacy uh, owners. And even then, if you buy the correct part, you shouldn't have this issue. But what's happening is I'm taking an e-brake shoe from Impreza, so it would work for like a WRX, Impreza, and whatever. But because of putting it on a Legacy, it's just a slightly different e-brake uh, setup. Now, it's very similar, but it is slightly different. I overlooked it, so, you know. From above, they look pretty well the same, but you notice there's two holes here. Now, originally, there was just one hole. Now, this hole does not line up with that hole, so I then had to add a second hole, and you can see it's pretty close to the material. Um, I think I'll get away with it and also this area that kind of pops out I kind of hammer down a little bit I'm gonna grind it down a little bit just to make sure it doesn't 
come in contact with the caliper because you can't see it is a little bit out. So the second issue has to do with this pin right here. So this is the pin that originally came on the oversized e-brake shoe for the Impreza. It's hard to see, but I'll hold it up side by side. It is slightly thicker. Um, and now thinking about it, something I could have done was just taken this part off the Impreza. It is thinner. Probably would work, but I don't know if it would clear everything up here. So I have a few options, but I got to make sure that that hole that I'm putting in place will clear right here. That's where this right here would go through about right here. And obviously right now it ain't clearing. Okay, now that both have been modified, let's see if I can at least get one side done and on the car. Now that we know that the e-brake works, I went ahead and tested it. Uh, next, we have to do is there's this little like there's a little adjuster screw down here. You can't really see it in the angle, but you'll see it when you do the job. There's, it's threaded. We want to have it set up so when we're driving, it's not actually applying any braking pressure on the inside of the rotor. And then when we pull our e-brake, it opens up, and our e-brake works. So on right now, there's not really much grabbing from the e-brake, so I am going to adjust them a little bit. So as you can see, it is grabbing it a little bit. So it is pulling it. So I think I'm going to leave it about there. It is time for the exciting part of this process, and that's putting the rear Brembo's on. You're, you can already see I have the bracket on the rear Brembo, and the reason for that is once it is mounted up, I can't really get in there and properly get the bolts in. Well, I mean, I might be able to, but it's going to be tight. So I decided to just put them on ahead of time. Before I put this on, we got to put the rear rotor back on. Well, believe it or not, uh, my phone died, uh, but I finished mounting everything up, just tighten it down. Tighten down the brake line right here. All that's left is our brake pads. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead, throw some brake lubricant on, and throw it in. I know you guys thought I forgot about that part right there. And to be honest, I did. I, I remembered it, I threw it back in. All we got left is the driver rear. I'm gonna go ahead bang this out, get it done. And then all we gotta do is bleed the brakes. Let's get her done. All right, lastly guys, a uh, thing that is common, or at least I've experienced it twice now in both my Impreza and my Legacy is the e-brake. When you pull it, there's like no tension. There, There's literally no tension into this. So what that means is your e-brake is not doing what it's supposed to do. It's not creating any tension on the rotor and therefore your brake's not gonna work, it's gonna roll away. You can see I've already taken it apart. Um, I didn't bother showing this just because based on your Subaru, it's probably gonna be a little bit different. But on the Legacy, uh, there's two bolts in the back. I believe they're 10 mils. There was like this little part right here that just kind of pulled the side and up. And you also have to release your e-brake uh, boot. Uh, but once we look inside, you can see the cable that is connected to your e-brake. And it does move, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that 10 mil right there until I can start feeling tension about, you know, about right there, halfway or so. 
and then it actually locks up up here. You don't want to go too far, otherwise your e-brake is going to be engaged all the way, but I'm going to go ahead, modify this, and I'll be right back. All right, now when I go ahead and pull it, I feel tension about right here, and it's locked. You can see I did move it a decent amount. There's a quite a bit more thread showing now. Uh, it might be a little too tight, so I might loosen it up. So before I button this all back together, I'm going to take it for a test drive, but that's all it is. All right, guys, so the last thing to do, since we have the Rumbles on the front and the rear, as you can tell, all done, the last thing to do is we got to bleed them. Looking from the front of your car, that's your brake uh, reservoir. That's where you put your fluid. Uh, there is a minimum and a max fill line, as you could see. Um, I've been filling mine as I've been doing this just because I don't want to have any air through the lines, and then I have to bleed the entire system. To bleed it, you want to bleed the calipers that are furthest from there. So on this car, and also on this car, it's the driver rear, passenger rear, passenger front, driver front. So I'm going to go ahead and get this side blood. It's pretty simple. I like to put a couple lines on it, break them loose beforehand, and make sure everything is nice and easy to move. And right now they are closed though. Uh, and then I'll go from the inside, make sure that's good, go to the outside, and I have my fiance inside helping me. You can see her legs. Your best friend's gonna be these flare nut wrenches. Uh, I have a whole kit of them, like that. So depending on your size, you can use different ends. So I'm gonna go ahead and bleed these and we will be done. All right, ladies and gents. So testing out the e-brake, it's definitely holding. So we're good. Let's get her going. And Kyle's recording, he's here. Let's see what up, Kyle. What's up? So this is your first drive in this thing? Yes. Let's get her up to like, let's go to like pri some private roads. Whenever break-in breaks, I like to slam. <laughs> like, I like to slam at like 60 kilometers an hour and, and let her slow down basically to like five. That's break. Okay, it wasn't great. But we probably gotta break it in a couple times because there is a protective thing on it. I pulled the battery. All right guys, I have been driving the car around for a couple of weeks and the last clip you would have seen was the, the car wasn't really braking. And basically what that was is there was a coating that was on the rotors and as soon as I got it off, braking's mint. Um, I have gone, car safety, she's good to go. So, you know, the mechanic that safety did thought it was good enough. So I must have done an all right job. Now I did just pull up the battery. So the ECU is a little upset with me. So she's gonna have to lure herself again. But let me just take her somewhere. I'm gonna look like a weirdo just slamming on my brakes. But I'll do it now, I guess. <laughs> All right, let me get her up to speed. 
Let's get her to, I don't know, let's get it to 60. Well, well I guess we're at 80 now. <laughs> she breaks. <laughs> I'm not gonna come to a full stop, but you get the idea, she she breaks. So now you guys know how to Bremble swap your Legacy. Again, this will work for older WRXs and you know Imprezas. Uh, I know the front's bolts up for your BRZs. Rears, I'm not sure, it might be the newer Brembos. I honestly, I don't know. I know front bolts up to practically everything Subaru-wise. Uh, rears, I don't know. Uh, but if you have an older Subaru, this video should help you guys out. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Take it easy.